Today we're going to continue our tour of different types of quantities, although we're, today we're going to study derived quantities as opposed to the foundational quantities that we studied last time. One of the first derived quantities is the quantity of area. Area is simply the amount of two-dimensional space that a surface contains. Essentially, it combines the quantity of length with itself, length times length. Now, the standard unit of area, therefore, would be a standard unit of length times a standard unit of length, or meters squared, sometimes called the square meter. There are many non-standard units of area as well. Any other unit of length squared could work as a unit of area, although commonly here in America, we often measure things in acres as well. Like before, here's the list of different conversions that you can write down if you'd like. In general, you can use any length conversions squared in order to make a conversion of area. For instance, if you want to convert meters squared into centimeters squared, you simply multiply by 100 squared. That's why you get 10,000. Likewise, there's 144, that's 12 times 12, inches squared in a foot squared. Occasionally in this class, we'll have to calculate the area of an object, and so it might be useful for you to have some of these foundational formulas for area. All area formulas are based on the basic idea of length times width, although some, like a triangle, are derived a little bit differently from that, or a circle has the constant of pi mixed in. And occasionally we'll need the surface area formula of a sphere, and that is 4 times pi times the radius squared. The next derived quantity we'll study is volume. Volume is simply the amount of three-dimensional space that an object fills. It's the combination of length times length times length. And so its standard units would be meters times meters times meters, or a cubic meter. Volume is such a commonly used quantity that we actually have two different standard units. Typically, when we're measuring solids, we tend to use cubic meters. And when we're measuring liquids, we tend to use liters. The two of them are related, and you can easily convert between them. Volume is one of the quantities that has the most different units associated with it. Some of the many non-standard units are listed here below. You can, of course, use any other unit of length cubed, for instance, cubic centimeters, which is commonly called cc's. For instance, a motorcycle has uh, so many cc's engine, or if you've ever watched one of those medical shows, you've probably heard them say so many cc's stat. Of course, you can use milliliters or um, kiloliters or megaliters or things of that nature as well. But then there's also a whole range of different units that commonly come from the English system, like gallons and quarts and pints and ounces and teaspoons and things of that nature. Like before, here's a list of many different volume conversions that you might find useful. Like with area, you can convert any volumes by simply using length conversions that you know cubed. So a cubic meter is 100 cubed centimeter cubed. 100 times 100 times 100, that's a million. And like area, we'll often have to calculate the volumes of various objects, so I've provided a handful of formulas. A simple box is just length times width times height, but if you have an object that is a cylinder or a prism, then you would calculate the area of the base and multiply that by its height. If that same sort of shape comes and tapers to a point, which would be a pyramid or a cone, then you would take the area of the base times the height and divide by 3. Finally, a sphere has a unique formula of 4 thirds times pi times r cubed. A third derived quantity I'd like to mention is the quantity of density. Density is the mass per unit of volume that an object has. Density has a unique symbol. You usually use the Greek letter rho, which kind of looks like a P at a bit of an angle. 
since density seems to come up all the time when we're talking about flotation and water and boats, you might be able to remember the symbol for density by just remembering the song, row, row, row your boat. There's a formula for density, and it's basically what the definition says. The formula is the mass of an object divided by its volume. What then would you predict would be the units for density? It would have to be a standard unit of mass over a standard unit of volume. So that would be a kilogram per cubic meter. Now, there are lots of other units you could use. You could use any unit of mass over any unit of volume as non-standards. Some common ones are kilograms per liter or grams per cubic centimeter. I actually know grams per cubic centimeter best because that's the unit I memorized a whole bunch of different densities in. Water conveniently has a density of exactly one gram per cubic centimeter or exactly one kilogram per liter. That's not a coincidence. The kilogram was originally defined that way. Here's a list of different densities that you might find useful. Notice water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Again, that was because it was defined that way. And everything else is based off of that definition. Another very common derived quantity that we'll be studying in this class is velocity. Velocity is basically the speed of a moving object. And it combines the quantities of distance and time. Velocity is always the distance that you traveled divided by the time that it's taken for you to get there. What would you predict its standard units are then? As you might have guessed, the standard unit of distance, a meter, divided by the standard unit of time, a second. And so the standard units of velocity are meters per second. Now, unfortunately, that standard unit is not very common. Typically, in America, we measure our velocities in miles per hour. That's a non-standard. And there are many other non-standards, like feet per second or kilometers per hour, as they measure speeds in Canada or not, as they might measure things while sailing. Here's a list of different conversions. I'd like you to pay particular attention to this first approximation that can be very useful when converting things between meters per second, which we're not very familiar with, and miles per hour, which we are. An object's velocity in miles per hour is basically double that of meters per second. The final quantity I'd like to describe for you today is force. A force is essentially any sort of a push or a pull on something. Now, there are so many different types of forces that we're going to take uh, several weeks to study them in the future. Here's just a handful of different types of forces. For instance, weight, which pushes or pulls you down to the ground. Thrust, friction, tension, floating, that's buoyancy, and a handful of others. Now, the standard unit of force is a Newton, which is named after Isaac Newton, who, who was so influential in describing and computing different types of forces, namely that of gravity. Since the standard unit of force is named after a person, it will always use a capital letter N, as opposed to many other units, which typically use lowercase letters. Now, you've probably heard the legend that Newton was working on his theory of gravity when all of a sudden he was hit by an apple and that provided the insight that made it all possible. By a pretty cool coincidence, one Newton weighs about the same as one apple. So the next time you eat an apple, kind of toss it up in your hand a little bit and get a feel for how much that apple pushes down on your hand while you're holding it. That's what one Newton weighs. There are many other non-standard units of force. Probably the most popular is the English unit of pounds. Remember earlier when I said pounds aren't technically units of mass? Technically, a pound is a unit of force. We'll get into that difference when we study forces later. Other non-standard units of interest might be ounces or tons or the super small unit of force called a dime. 
here's a handful of conversions that you can write down and use.